Yes, my name is Dr Sarah Hellowell. I'm a lecturer in modern British history uh, in the Faculty of Education and Society and I teach a whole range of modules on the BA history and the MA historical research. What is the importance of reading then in history? Um, reading is absolutely crucial to studying history. Mm -hmm. um, history is all about an interpretation of the past and how mm -hmm. different people have interpreted the past and what perspective they have and what arguments they've constructed. So it's really important for students to be able to understand that through reading really widely yeah. through academic books and journal articles and so on to get a sense of what other people have said about the past, mm -hmm. what those perspectives are, different interpretations so they can then go on to form their own interpretation and argument about the past. Um, I'd also say that students need to read widely because their lectures and seminars are just an introduction to a particular theme or yeah. topic, um, an overview of a particular event or time period or theme and to be able to really get to grips with it students need to go away and then do extra research and additional reading, it's not enough to just rely on what their lecturer has, has told them because that's very much an introduction. Okay, so that kind of leads us on to what kinds of things mm -hmm. that you read like as a professional historian. Yeah, so we read pretty much the same as what we're asking our students to read, so books okay. and journal articles in particular, um, but also a lot of primary research, so we're going into archives and so on. Okay. And this is something that we're trying to introduce students to as well, you know, mm -hmm. I always bring in um, primary sources, so documents, newspaper articles, letters, diaries, that kind of thing from from the relevant time period to get to yeah. grips with um, that topic and that's what we're doing as, as historians as well, going into archives and getting our hands on the actual sources mm. and reading those and interpreting those alongside kind of secondary literature, so what's been written by other historians as well. So we're asking our students to do what we do as historians and so mm -hmm. very much kind of training them to do yeah. um, that kind of research as well. When you're reading, you need to be very critical, and that might be kind of you're critiquing it in a positive way, you value mm -hmm. that source, but it might also be that you think something's uh, missing from that source. Yeah. And um, no one source can tell you the full picture about something in history, which is why you need to read um, a range of different sources to, to get that full picture, yeah. um, both primary sources and kind of secondary sources as well. So it's about kind of evaluating the source, you know, why it was written who wrote it, mm -hmm. what was the purpose, who might have read it, all those kind of questions we're always asking about whatever we're reading. Yeah, and I suppose it's that blend of those two types of sources that ultimately make your yeah. work kind of stronger. Yeah, exactly, to help you get that fuller picture mm -hmm. and the balance between the different sources. And that's what we really build students up towards when they come to do their dissertation in the final year. They're using yeah. primary sources and relying on them more heavily, but balancing that with the secondary literature as well. Great. Okay, the next question is really about the role of reading in higher education study. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of what do you see as maybe the key thing around reading at higher education? I think reading in higher education helps students to develop those kind of critical thinking skills, which are really important, I think, in a whole range of different jobs, not just to become a professional historian like no. us, but a whole range of different careers, you know, if you want to go into law or work in local government and um, even teaching or a whole range of different things that you're going to need to be able to look at documents and pieces of evidence and be critical about them and mm -hmm. um, whether that's a new source um, or other kind of official documents and sources. I think that, that skill that you develop through reading mm -hmm. and not just reading passively but being active in your reading um, engaging with the source, kind of reading between the lines, they're all really useful skills for students. And I think it's something as well that has become really pertinent in this era of fake news, being able to assess yeah. a source for its validity, yeah. who's written a source, what's their kind of own angle, perspective, what's their agenda, yeah. and they're all the skills that we've always been doing as historians. Mm -hmm. So even now in the current climate, that makes it even more useful for students Definitely. to be able to do. Okay, so when you're marking students' work, um, in terms of reading, what are you really looking for to kind of show what they've done? Yeah, so one of the first things I actually do when I mark a student essay is to look at the bibliography and okay. the references. 
and that gives you a really good sense mm -hmm. of what the students read, how much they've read, and the references, uh, the footnotes in history will show you um, how often they're engaging with sources and how they're using the sources to back up their evidence. Okay. Um, and that's really important that students aren't just making claims and assertions, they're backing it up with evidence yeah. from what they've read. Mm -hmm. um, and they show that by kind of citing properly. So we get a real sense of how much kind of extra additional reading they've done by looking at the bibliography and looking at their reference list first. Mm -hmm. It gives me a good indication of kind of the level of the essay as well yeah. early on. We're also looking for how the students have actually engaged with the source, so not just that they've listed it in their bibliography and mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, we've read it, but that they're directly engaging mm -hmm. with the literature, so being able to identify what other historians have said about a topic and what their argument is, is really yeah. important, and that's quite a difficult skill to master, and that's mm -hmm. something that students really develop over the course of the three years, yeah. uh, being able to say, you know, so-and-so states this, and being able to weigh up whether they kind of agree or disagree with that argument yeah. really helps to strengthen student essays and their own argument within that essay. Um, so it's not just about reading and listing what you've read, mm -hmm. but about whether the student's actually engaging with the source as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because again, it's kind of easy to be fairly descriptive yeah. about things and go, well, yeah. I read this bit in a book, yeah. so I'm going to say about it, but yeah. actually kind of explaining the significance of that yeah. or whether that contradicts what somebody else is saying that's kind of where it yeah. gets yeah tricky exactly so we want students to be critical mm -hmm. and analytical and being able to evaluate sources they're not mm -hmm. just reading books and journal articles to get kind of facts and dates mm -hmm. about the past yeah that's important but we really want that analysis as well so it's mm -hmm. not just um a description or a story about what happened they're really analyzing why things happened how they happened and what other historians have said about that and whether they kind of agree or, or disagree that helps you know the more you read over the course of your three-year degree and then the more you practice your writing that's really going to help you to improve yeah i think that's everything cool. that we need <laughs>